Egypt's impact on other cultures was undeniably immense. From the earliest periods of pre-dynastic Egypt, there is evidence of trade connections that extended as far east as the Indus Valley. These trade routes passed through the Near East, resulting in an early exchange of motifs and ideas between the civilizations of Mesopotamia and Egypt. Brought even more active connections with Western Asia, including robust commercial and diplomatic relationships, as well as a mutual exchange of imagery and concepts with cultures like the Assyrians and the Hittites. Lively interactions with the South contributed to dynamic cultures, such as the Kushites, who ruled Egypt during the 25th dynasty and whose monuments displayed an innovative blend of local Nubian and Pharaonic imagery. Rulers and the elite from Mero, in modern Sudan, were buried in pyramid tombs for many centuries, with more than 200 having been identified, that country actually contains more pyramids within its borders than Egypt does. Egypt also provided some of the building blocks for the Aegean, Greek, and Roman cultures, and, through them, influenced many aspects of Western tradition. Today, Egyptian imagery, concepts, and perspectives are found everywhere, when you know what to look for, you will see them in architectural forms, on money, and in our day-to-day -day lives. Many cosmetic surgeons, for example, use the silhouette of Queen Nefertiti, whose name means the beautiful one has come in their advertisements. Ancient Egyptian civilization lasted for more than 3,000 years and showed a stunning level of continuity. That is more than 15 times the age of the United States, and consider how often our culture shifts. As recently as 2003, there was no Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. While today we consider the Greco-Roman period to be in the distant past, it should be noted that is closer to our own time than it was to that of the construction of the pyramids of Giza. It took humans nearly 4,000 years to build something, anything, taller than the Great Pyramid. Contrast that span to modern times, we get excited when a record lasts longer than a decade. Egypt's stability is in stark contrast to the ancient Near East of the same period, which endured an overlapping series of cultures and upheavals with amazing regularity. The earliest royal monuments, such as the Nama Palette carved around 3100 BCE, display identical royal costumes and poses as those seen on later rulers, even Ptolemaic kings and Roman emperors on their temples more than three millennia later. This consistency and stability is closely linked with one of the central foundational concepts in the way ancient Egyptians saw the world around them. In their view, creation occurred when order triumphed over chaos and harnessed that amorphous power to bring the land of Egypt into existence. The perfect cosmic balance that resulted created the consistent cycles they saw in their natural world, such as the daily rising and setting of the sun and the Nile's annual inundation. This divine order was known as Ma'at, embodying truth, righteousness, justice, and cosmic law, and was eventually personified as a goddess. There was a perpetual struggle between Ma'at and the chaos, known as Isfet. From early in Egypt's history, a primary role of the pharaoh was to be the champion of Ma'at and preserve that cosmic order, to help protect Egypt from the Isfet that surrounded them. The ongoing preservation of Ma'at was seen as fundamentally important and the drive to maintain that perfect cosmic balance permeated the culture on multiple levels. A vast amount of Egyptian imagery, especially royal imagery that was governed by decorum, a sense of what was appropriate, remained extraordinarily consistent throughout its history. This is why, especially to the untrained eye, their art appears extremely static and in terms of symbols, gestures, and the way the body is rendered, it was. It was intentional, as the consistency was the whole point. The Egyptians were well aware of their consistency, which they viewed as stability, divine balance, and clear evidence of Ma'at and the correctness of their culture. This consistency was also closely related to a fundamental belief that depictions had an impact beyond the image itself, tomb scenes of the deceased receiving food or temple scenes of the king performing perfect rituals for the gods were functionally causing those things to occur in the divine realm. If the image of the bread loaf was omitted from the deceased's table, they had no bread in the afterlife, 
If the king was depicted with the incorrect ritual implement, the ritual was incorrect and could have dire consequences. This belief led to active resistance to change in codified depictions. The earliest recorded tourist graffiti on the planet came from a visitor from the time of Ramses II, who left their appreciative mark at the already 1,300-year-old site of the Steppe Pyramid at Saqqara, the earliest of the massive royal stone monuments. They were understandably impressed by the works of their ancestors and wrote of their desire to continue that ancient legacy. Egypt is a land of duality and cycles, both in topography and culture. The geography is almost entirely rugged, barren desert, except for an explosion of green that straddles either side of the Nile as it flows the length of the country. The river emerges from far to the south, deep in Africa, and empties into the Mediterranean Sea in the north after spreading from a single channel into a fan-shaped system, known as a delta, in its northernmost section. The river valley is flanked by imposing cliffs of limestone and sandstone, with deposits of other, harder stones like granite and granodiorite being found in the area of Aswan to the south. One of the reasons for the overall stability of Egyptian culture was that it was largely isolated by virtue of its geography. With high cliffs and expansive deserts bordering the east and west, the sea at the north, and a series of huge rapids in the Nile to the south known as cataracts, the stretch of the river valley that gave rise to dynastic Egypt was quite closed off from the outside. Egypt was undoubtedly the gift of the Nile, as the Greek historian Herodotus famously wrote. The influence of this river on Egyptian culture and development cannot be overstated without its presence, the civilization would have been entirely different. The Nile provided not only a constant source of life-giving water, but created the fertile lands that fed the growth of this unique and uniquely resilient culture. Each year, fed by melting snow in the far-off headlands deep in Africa, the Nile overflowed its banks in an annual flood that covered the ground with rich, black silt and produced incredibly fertile fields. The Egyptians referred to this area as Kemet, the Black Lands, and contrasted this dense, dark soil against the Deshret, the red lands of the sterile desert, the line between these zones was, and in most cases still is, a literal line. The visual effect is stark, appearing almost artificial in its precision. The annual inundation of the Nile was also a reliable and measurable cycle that helped form their concept of the passage of time. In fact, the calendar we use today in the West is derived from one developed by the ancient Egyptians. They divided the year into three seasons, Akat, inundation, Peret, growing emergence, and Shem, harvest each season was divided into four 30-day months. Although this annual cycle, paired with the daily solar cycle that is so evident in the desert, led to a powerful drive to see the universe in terms of cyclical time, this idea existed simultaneously with the reality of linear time. These two concepts, the cyclical and the linear, came to be associated with two of their primary deities, Osiris, the eternal lord of the dead, and Ra, the sun god who was reborn with each dawn. Rulers in Egypt were complex intermediaries that straddled the terrestrial and divine realms. They were, obviously, living humans, but upon accession to the throne, they also embodied the eternal office of kingship itself. The Ka, or spirit, of kingship was often depicted as a separate entity standing behind the human ruler. This divine aspect of the office of kingship was what gave authority to the individual person who was the king. The living king was associated with the god Horus, the powerful, virile falcon-headed god who was believed to bestow the throne to the first human king. Horus's immensely important father, Osiris, was the lord of the underworld. One of the original divine rulers of Egypt, this deity embodied the promise of regeneration. Cruelly murdered by his brother Seth, the god of the chaotic desert, Osiris was revived through the potent magic of his wife Isis. Through her knowledge and skill, Osiris was able to sire the miraculous Horus, who avenged his father and threw his criminal uncle off the throne to take his rightful place. 
Few civilizations have enjoyed the longevity and global cultural reach of ancient Egypt. Their distinct visual expressions, writing system, and imposing monuments are instantly recognizable by viewers all around the world even today. Put simply, their branding was on point. Despite portraying significant stability over a vast period of time, their civilization was not as static as it may appear at first glance, particularly if viewed through our modern eyes and cultural perspectives. Instead, the culture was dynamic even as it revolved around a stable core of imagery and concepts. The ancient Egyptians adjusted to new experiences, constantly adding to their complex beliefs about the divine and terrestrial realms, and how they interact. This flexibility, wrapped around a base of consistency, was part of the reason ancient Egypt survived for millennia and continues to fascinate. With the blazing sun above, flanked by vast seas of shifting sand, and fed by the life-giving Nile River, which had frightening creatures beneath its dark waters, the natural world of Egypt was inherently beautiful, but also potentially deadly. Outside the lush river valley, there was little protection from the ever-dominant sun, whose intensity was both feared and revered. The deserts were home not only to many dangerous creatures, but the sands themselves were also unpredictable and constantly shifting. The clear night skies dazzled with millions of stars, some of which seemed to move of their own accord while others rose and fell at trackable intervals. The Nile, with its annual floods, brought fertility and renewal to the land, but could also overflow and wreak havoc on the villages that lined its banks. Careful observers of their environment, the Egyptians perceived divine forces in these phenomena, and many of their deities, such as the powerful sun god Ra, were connected with elements from the natural world. The perception of divine powers existing in the natural world was particularly true in connection with the animals that inhabited the region. There was an array of creatures that the Egyptians would have observed or interacted with on a regular basis, and they feature heavily in the culture. One of the most distinctive visual attributes of Egyptian imagery is the myriad deities that were portrayed in hybrid form with a human body and animal head. In addition, a wide range of birds, fishes, mammals, reptiles, and other creatures appear prominently in the hieroglyphic script, there are dozens of different birds alone. The Nile was packed with numerous types of fish, which were recorded in great detail in fishing scenes that became a fixture in non-royal tombs. Most relief and painting throughout Egypt's history was created for divine or mortuary settings, and they were primarily intended to be functional. Many tomb scenes included the life-giving Nile and all its abundance with the goal of making that bounty available for the deceased in the afterlife. In addition to the array of fish, the river also teemed with far more dangerous animals like crocodiles and hippopotami. Protective spells and magical gestures were used from early on to aid the Egyptians in avoiding those watery perils as they went about their daily lives. The desert, likewise, was full of potentially dangerous creatures. Lions, leopards, jackals, cobras, and scorpions were all revered for their attributes and feared for their ferocity. Soaring above were birds of prey, like falcons who were sharp-eyed hunters, and massive vultures that consumed decaying flesh and fed it to their young. Scarab beetles also seemingly brought new life from decay, and the sacred ibis, with their curved beaks found sustenance hidden in the muddy banks of the Nile. All of these creatures, and many others, became closely associated with different deities very early in Egyptian history. The Egyptians did not worship animals, instead, certain animals were revered because it was believed that they were related to particular gods and thus served as earthly manifestations of those deities. Even domesticated animals, such as cows, bulls, rams, and geese, became associated with deities and were viewed as vitally important. Cattle were probably the first animals to be domesticated in Egypt and domesticated cattle, donkeys, and rams appear along with wild animals on pre-dynastic and early dynastic votive objects, showing massive herds that were controlled by early rulers, demonstrating their wealth and prestige. Pastoral scenes of animal husbandry appear in numerous private tomb chapels and wooden models, providing detailed evidence of their daily practices. 
Herdsmen appear caring for their animals in depictions that include milking, carving, protecting the cattle as they cross the river, feeding, herding, and many other aspects of their day-to-day -day care. Already in the pre-dynastic period the king was linked with the virile wild bull, an association that continues throughout Egyptian history. One of the primary items of royal regalia was a bull tail, which appears on a huge number of pharaonic images. An early connection between the king and lions is also apparent. One scene on a pre-dynastic ceremonial palette, the battlefield palette, shows the triumphant king as a massive lion devouring his defeated foes. First dynasty kings appear to have kept lion cubs as pets. In addition, lions, among other animals, were associated with the burials of some early rulers. One of the most iconic images from ancient Egypt is the massive Great Sphinx at Giza, which was sculpted from the living rock of the plateau. This fused form, with the body of a lion and the head of the king, became a common visual expression of royal power. While many of the religious and cultural characteristics of ancient Egypt were evident from very early on and continued all the way through the Roman era, contributing to overall cultural stability, sweeping conceptual developments and adoptions of external elements are also evident. Throughout ancient Egypt's long history, periods of unified control were interspersed with moments of instability where parts of the country were controlled by different authorities. These repeated waves of political and cultural development create a decidedly complex history that spans thousands of years. The civilization of ancient Egypt obviously did not spring fully formed from the Nile mud, although the massive pyramids at Giza may appear to the uninitiated to have appeared out of nowhere. They were founded on thousands of years of cultural and technological development and experimentation. Dynastic Egypt sometimes referred to as pharaonic after pharaoh the greek title of the egyptian kings derived from the egyptian title for aa great house which was used from the new kingdom on which was the time when the country was largely unified under a single ruler begins around 3000 bc the period before this lasting from about 5000 bc until the unification of upper and lower egypt under one ruler is referred to as pre-dynastic by modern scholars. Prior to this were thriving Paleolithic and Neolithic groups, stretching back hundreds of thousands of years, descended from northward migrating Homo erectus, who settled along the Nile Valley. During the pre-dynastic period, ceramics, figurines, mace heads, and other artifacts such as slate palettes used for grinding pigments, begin to appear, as does imagery that will become iconic during the pharaonic era, and we can see the first hints of what is to come. It is important to recognize that the dynastic divisions modern scholars use were not used by the ancients themselves. These divisions were created in the first chronological history of Egypt, written by an Egyptian priest named Manetho in the 3rd century BCE. Each of the 30 dynasties included a series of rulers usually related by family connections, or the location of their seat of power. Egyptian history is also divided into larger chunks, known as kingdoms, and periods, to distinguish times of strength and unity kingdoms from those of change, foreign rule, or disunity periods. Like many other ancient cultures, the Egyptians themselves referred to their history in relation to the ruler of the time. Years were recorded as the regnal dates of the ruling king, so that with each new reign, the numbers began anew. The usual dating format included the day of the month and season, along with the regnal year of the king, for example, day four of the second month of the season Peret in the third year of Khafra. This ancient practice creates challenges for modern historians, making it difficult to determine exact dating for many events and reigns. This is the reason that different resource books on ancient Egypt may provide slightly different dates for the same object. Generally, dates are provided here as circa, c, or approximate, for this reason, 